Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to start the Intermediate Python course on DataCamp. But first I'd like to say thank you to everybody who watches these videos, and especially to everyone who's liked the video or subscribed to the channel, because you all encourage me to continue making these videos. Let's get started. At the bottom of the exercise description, it says, This course touches on a lot of concepts you may have forgotten. So if you ever need a quick refresher, download the Python for Data Science cheat sheet and keep it handy. I'm wondering if this means I was supposed to take the Python for Data Science course after the intro one, before the intermediate one. However, DataCamp itself sent me on to the intermediate Python course. Alright, let's have a look at this. So this looks like a lot of the stuff that we've done. We have variables and data types, which I think was the first part of the course. We have libraries. They show import and import as. And they have from uh, import. They talk about strings and numpy arrays, which is what we just finished doing. They talk about lists, which was also in the intro course. They talk about IDEs, and they have the help function listed, but we probably won't be using IDEs because we're on DataCamp. Alright, so they've given us a list called year and a list called pop. Year is all the years from 1950 to 2100, and pop is the populations of those years. So, if I'm reading this right, index zero of year would be 1950, and index zero of pop would be the population, world population in 1950. And then obviously everything after after now, but after probably sometime in the past, is predicted. Okay, so we're going to print the last item from year. Let me see something first. Okay, how to get the last item in a list? This is what I started thinking. It would be the length of the list minus one. But I think we can just do negative one, not positive. So let me try this real quick. Let's see if these return the same thing. Yeah, 2100. So we can just do negative 1, and that means on the population, we just type pop. And negative 1. Now we want to import matplotlib.iplot as plt okay then if you see this code sample they gave us on the side it tells us how to create and show the plot so make a line plot year on the x-axis and pop on the y-axis. And then we display it. Plot.show. Alright, run this. And we have a population. World population goes up over time. Let's submit this. Yay! Okay, great. Let's interpret the plot you just created. Okay. Have another look at the plot you created in the previous exercise. It's shown on the right. 
Based on the plot, in approximately what year will there be more than 10 billion human beings on the planet? So approximately this year, I'll say 2060. Submit. Correct. Time to take your data visualization skills to the next level. Okay, they've already imported uh, Mathplotlib as plot. And they've given us two, I guess, lists. Life expectancy, which is the life expectancy for each country. And GDP cap, which is the GDP per capita, which is the GDP per person for each country in US dollars. Okay, so they're saying the last item from each list is about Zimbabwe. So we're gonna do print life exp negative one for the last item. And then we're gonna print GDP cap negative one and all we're doing is the same thing we did last time where we say plot dot plot ot of and then we're saying the x-axis which is gdp cap and the y-axis which is life X. And then we show oops nope the line chart. Oh wow, wait a second. Submit. Well done, but this doesn't look right. Let's build a plot that makes more sense. Yeah, please. Because that is a crazy drawing. Okay, again, they've already imported PLT. We are now going to try a scatter chart. What they're saying is... When you have a time scale along the horizontal axis, the line plot is your friend. But in many other cases, if you're trying to assess if there's a correlation between two variables, the scatter plot is a better choice. So we are going to try the scatter chart. Okay, so instead of plot, we're going to say scatter. I already know how to show, so I'm going to just do show, and then we have to figure out what line number 5 is supposed to be. Here, let me run this and see what it looks like. Okay. Now, it sounds like I'm supposed to just type plt x scale log and let's see how this changes huh. i don't know how you know that you need to do that unless you're good at math right or statistics great that looks much better Oh, it's because it spreads it out more. We had the shape like a sideways L, but now it's just more spread out because maybe there's more... I don't know. Oh. Okay, I kind of think I see what it's saying. I think. But if I'm right, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, so we're basically doing the same steps we've been doing. We're trying to see if there's a correlation between 
population and life expectancy. So we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now we build our scatter chart. Okay, and they have the two variables or lists already available. So doing plot.scatter, the x axis, I'm going to assume is life expectancy. Oh, wait. Population is horizontal, so let's try population first and life expectancy second. And then we show. PLT show. So this is, if I understand it right, if we did the, the logarithmic scale, then these dots would be more spread out. So do we see a correlation? I don't, because most of them are at zero. Oh, it's in thousands. So if that's 200,000, oh, it's millions. Wait. So the scatter chart is wrong. I mean, we shouldn't have two. Somewhere where we're saying 200 million people, we need to spread these out so we can see. Because, like, these aren't all zero. All right, submit. Nice. There's no clear relationship between population and life expectancy, which makes perfect sense. All right, I'm going to stop here for now, and I will continue this in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helped you in some way.